All right, today's video, I'm gonna talk about this. I bought this truck about seven months ago, needed a new clutch, it had some very off maintenance stuff that needed to be addressed. I just needed a little work truck, four cylinder, gas prices were getting crazy. I needed something with a cab, because I tow a lot of stuff and I wanna haul a bunch of things and if I want a passenger, I can have a passenger back there. So I decided after my Dakota, I was gonna actually go down in size, get off the V6, drop it down to a four cylinder, go this route, AC system had to be replaced. I did all the work myself on this truck, minus the transmission um, it does have a used rear end uh, a used engine and a used transmission in it all of them have a hundred thousand miles on them um, not over that I think actually the transmission has a hundred and two thousand miles the body of the truck has two hundred thousand miles on it or hundred ninety one thousand miles on it um, but the the whole rest of the drive components for the vehicle all have a hundred thousand miles so the truck has a lot of life left in it however there's a bunch of stuff I want to talk about failure points that I've noticed things that irritated me to the point where I swapped them out and modified for different things Things, um, to make it work and so we'll go ahead and talk about all of that overall um, transmission's been pretty solid it is a manual five speed um, but there are things that are irritating me and I'm going to show you some major failure points some of it's going to be cosmetic some of it's going to be mechanical and I think today is a good time to talk about that headlights these things are garbage they're trash they suck they're really easy to replace i'm actually getting prepared to do mine when these yellow out they barely show any light on the road at night it's horrible it's just a joke um the grill on these things they break real easy and once they break they start to rattle and make all sorts of noises while the truck is at idle especially with the air conditioner on it makes noises the ac systems on these things suck you will be replacing them it's easy to do yourself if you have not done that they just have a very high failure rate. I don't know why, they just do whatever. It's a, it's a direct AC system, direct drive AC system, which normally robs a ton of power from the engine to run a system like this, but it is what it is. It's all right. When you go up hills and stuff, uh, massive inclines, if you're towing a load or you have a haul in the back of the truck, you're gonna wanna turn your AC system off if the grade is very steep, because otherwise you're gonna be severely robbed of power and have to continue to downshift to get up the hill, and you wanna try to maintain your flow of traffic. Traffic. So definitely a downfall of the 2.2 liters is that they just don't have a ton of power. And bear in mind, normally when I'm doing that kind of stuff, I have a, you know, 500 to 1,000 pound motorcycle in the back of this thing. And it's just, it's heaving and hauling, trying to get up the hill with the AC on and hot weather. So, you know, just turn it off, get up the grade, turn the AC back on. Otherwise, it just robs a ton of power from the vehicle that you need to get up the hill. Um, the blower fan on these things suck. As you can see, I've just replaced the blower fan. I replaced the whole AC system. Um, also, the wiper motors, those are garbage. The, the wiper motor fails quite often. You have to replace that. Um, so, fairly easy job. I have how to do this stuff on my YouTube channel. Um, the throttle, bottle, throttle body on these things does kick back a lot of um, uh, exhaust fumes, which ends up giving you a bunch of carbon inside of your throttle body. For whatever reason, it just does, and it'll start to make the butterfly sit higher and higher and higher, and pretty soon you'll have a really weird idle, and the car will start acting really funny. So you have to take the throttle body off every once in a while and clean this. Remember to dis disconnect the battery when you do this, okay? Because it is electronically controlled system, so just disconnect the battery when you do this. Um, another thing, guys, is that the thermostat Though it's easy to get to, it does fail quite often. I don't know why these things run so hot, but they do. Um, and another major failure point that I noticed on these is that the fan clutch gives out often. I don't know if you guys can see that, but I've removed my fan off the clutch plate. It's gone. There is no fan, there is no clutch. What I did do is direct wire in an electric fan with a switch inside the truck because I replaced two fan clutches with the original fan and they just kept failing and it was getting very annoying and I was getting very tired of it and it was very costly to fix. So I went and I bought a $60 electric fan. I tore all this apart and I installed it in between the radiator and the uh, condenser up in the front and now it pulls and blows cold air and keeps the car very cool. I love it. It's very nice and it's not too taxing on the system. It's actually works very well. So as soon as you flip the switch on, car stays nice and cool. doesn't matter if it's 110 degrees outside, running the AC, whatever, towing a load, truck does not seem to have a problem. And the fan that I installed, so the radiator is this big, the fan I put in is only that big, but it is directly installed in the center and screwed down to the plates. You can see I've run the wires right here. I have everything hidden because I don't, I'm 
OCD as fuck and I don't like shit hanging out looking weird. You can see I ran the wire over to here. So that's really all you can see. If I hadn't told you that, you wouldn't have known unless you got in and said, oh, what's this toggle switch for? That's for my electric fan. I really hate the design of how they did this. You have to tear fucking everything apart. So when I replaced the radiator, I went ahead and just put an electric fan set up in there because it just made way more sense. A um, lot less problems, a lot less issues. Don't have, you know, failing clutches. And if the car starts to overheat, you will get warnings on your dash. And then you know your electric fan failed. You just have to pop this piece off in this, take off this top bracket, and you have complete access to the electric fan just to disconnect it. Pop in the new one, slap this back on. It's very easy. The way I've designed it is very simple. And then just rewire it and you're good to go. Um, so that's, that's this stuff. Um, I still want to talk some cosmetics inside the truck, so we're actually going to open it up. Uh, but overall, engine's been pretty solid. Um, I haven't had any pulley issues. I know a lot of people are saying the pulley issues on these things are horrible. Uh, it seems to still be the original alternator. As you can see, I have my used engine numbers on the back there. You can see the yellow writing back there. That's the used engine. Um, so, like I said, I've, I've done complete swaps on this. this. truck should be reliable for a long time. Almost the entire system's been replaced at this, at this point. Um, I did replace my dryer. AC compressor, um, AC condenser in the front, and you know, so on and so forth. Um, so I, I replaced the entire AC system myself, including the radiator, because it needed it. It was leaking really bad. Um, so what was I going to say? Oh, yeah, you can see all the corrosion on the on the uh, alternator. It's still working good. I hope it doesn't fail. That looks like a hell of a job to get to. Um, the starter did burn out. <laughs> I had to replace a starter. That was a huge job. They really did not make that a simple spot to get to the starter. I hope you don't have to do that, but it is a very common failure point for these things. So yeah, overall though, clutch, transmission, and engine have been very solid since I replaced them. Um, still blowing heat, still blowing cold air. Everything seems to be working. These windshield wiper containers uh, get very soft over time, and there's a hole halfway down on this one, so it only lets me fill it up half. These are pretty easy to replace, but this is a pretty high failure point on these things. They just give out and then you don't have any any spray. <laughs> you have no window spray. So let's take a look inside the truck. Um, talk about a few things that irritate me inside here. Um, this, this switch, first of all, the speakers are garbage. Replace them. I bought some cheap ones online, just put some covers on them. They work great. Everything works great now. Um, all these plastics up here are, don't get me wrong, they're cheap. Um, the plastic vents and stuff, yeah, they're they're super cheap. You can get them on eBay for 25 bucks. I did replace the the speaker covers as well. It all came as one kit. I replaced them, but just let you know, they are brittle. They are very brittle. So if you tamper with them and tinker, they fall down, and then it gets into the fan and starts making noises, and you hear all that shit, and it's just a, a huge annoyance. Um, and the dash, the dash gets really bad. I really wanted to replace this radio. But this dash broke in like 10 different spots just by me pulling on this. This whole section gave out. It snapped all up here. It started to break over here. I was like, oh, okay, fuck that. I just went and got a, a AC tuner. <laughs> I went and got one of these little Bluetooth things, FM tuners, and plugged it in because I really don't want to replace an entire dashboard over wanting Bluetooth music. So I just got a FM tuner. Here's my toggle switch. I'm probably going to install something a little bit more permanent here at some point. But right now, this works good. Just flip the switch fan comes on easy as pie right um i also noticed that if you turn the blower on to four it gets that terminal out there very very hot if i leave it on three it's fine four so if you're burning out fans constantly try just only doing three yeah it might be a little hot but just try setting it on three you can feel the terminal connected to the blower fan if it feels like it's just warm that's all right if it's hot you're melting wires, dude. It's, it's not good. So, yeah, I leave mine on three, and I have yet to have a problem since I did that. Um, also, the passenger airbag light. This thing is garbage. Turning this on or off doesn't seem to do shit. When this fails, it just fails. It doesn't 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 give you any any anything. It just sucks. Um, shifter overall has been very good. I noticed that when this stuff breaks, it breaks. It just falls out, and you can't get it back in, and it's a huge annoyance. So. Once I get it to stay up there, I just leave it. Don't mess with this. All these plastics inside these S10s and these Sonomas are just garbage. Absolute garbage. But that is a big one right there, that failure of, of all this. Um, the lights do get very dim. If you want to tear all this apart and replace that, you can do that. 
Um, I realize this is simple stuff, guys, but it's stuff that annoys the shit out of me, especially as a driver, a daily driver. These things frustrate the fuck out of me. Um, so let's talk about this now. I, I already had to replace this, and I bought a used one, but I already had to replace it. These windshield wiper switches just sit and they bake in the sun, and then the sensors just get really shitty on them, and then they just fail. Um, if you had a rag or something, my suggestion, if you want to keep this in good shape and yours already works, just throw a rag over this. So if it is baking in the sun, it won't be such an issue. I keep forgetting to do it, but if you do have a rag that you can just throw over this, a light colored rag, like white or something that's going to repel that, the nature of the black, that's just going to absorb the heat for whatever reason, man, it just does not do these things any, any, any good. Um, another big failure point on these things is these rubber guards. As you can see, I've replaced mine all the way down. I also doubled up right here, all the way across to here where I could see the leaks. I was getting air and water in, and it was leaking straight on through and onto my carpet, which ended up being a huge deal. That was very annoying, so I, I solved that. Um, but overall, mechanically, I would say this truck is pretty sound. Uh, the top lever did break up here for the top one, so I just removed it instead of replacing the door. And then I just popped this little prong out here so I can just give a pull, and it'll unlock the bottom, right? So that's all I need to do now is just unlock the bottom. But as you can see, all this failed for whatever reason. I just removed the buckle up here. If you guys can see that, I just removed the whole buckle from the top and just took it out. So it just clips on the bottom, and it's still working good. I'm not even going to stress it. It's not, it's not worth my time or effort to chase that. Um, all this stayed in pretty good shape back here. You can see I mounted my chair, my computer, my, you know, in case I have to plug in a big boy toy, big 2000 watt power inverter, my little seat back there in case somebody wants to sit. That flips up, disappears, my ramp can go back here. This does have a tow package with four leaf spring setup, so I do have my Reese and Kirch hit, Kirk hitch on there. Um, and everything seems to be working good. Uh, the bed on these things, boy, I gotta give the, the bed credit on these trucks. I've had some very heavy bikes in the back of this thing, and it does not suffer one bit. This truck does great. The springs on the back of this truck are great. And if you got if you got a little liner, as you can see, I've had to screw mine down. Multiple people have already tried to steal it. So finally just got to the point where I metal screwed it down. Yeah, it might look a little weird, but people stopped trying to steal the bed liner. So I don't have to deal with that anymore. But I've had a lot of weight and tires crunched up against this. And on my Dakota, this all bent forward from the from the pressure of the straps that I strap in. Pushing against the tire, it bent all this in the center. It's a very flimsy bed. On these, these things are built like a tank, man. I'm very surprised. Very happy and surprised by the way this works. Uh, outside of that, just normal dings, dents, you know, silly shit. The sun gets out here, gets these hot, these kind of bubble up. When the sun goes away, these go back down. It's, it's really weird. I might actually just put a couple more metal screws in there to get that to stop. But like I said, I got tired of people trying to steal my bed liner. I like the bed liner. I want to keep it. You know, I don't know why. I want to keep it. So, but outside of that, I don't really care about the aesthetics of the truck on the outside. My job is this AC point A to point B. Does it work? Does it get the job done? Does everything work properly? Yes. Um, the drum brakes on these. Guys, holy shit. They are not good. Um, constantly monitor your drum brakes. They have a lot of leaks on the back. I finally got tired of what was happening back there and just started replacing everything. So uh, the drum brakes on the back of these things are just trash. If you can replace the parts when you get the truck, I suggest to do that. Uh, I, I realize it's cheaper to do things yourself that's why i do things myself um, but if you have to pay a mechanic to do it i suggest if you plan on keeping the truck for a while to do that the drum brakes on the back of these are trash the ones on the front no issues all i had to do is replace the pads rotors are in good shape everything's fine as far as the suspension and the front end goes you're gonna love this we're gonna take a trip underneath the truck oh, uh, you will notice that they have grease joints on almost every mechanical part that moves. You can see the nipples all the way across. There's a nipple there, a nipple there. They made this so that this should last a long time, as long as you're keeping up with lubricating the parts and components. Um, outside of that, I've had literally no issues, none whatsoever. Um, the entire suspension on this truck is doing great. All the rubber guards for how old they are, are all in good shape And that's because it was designed to stay that way. So shout outs to uh, GMC and and Chevy for finally producing something worth a damn um, Everything's in good shape. It all looks like original parts and components and everything looks in good shape So shocks spring towers all of it all good shape, you know makes me makes me a happy guy 
Makes me a happy guy. God, I can see the starter back there. I don't ever want to do that job again. Fucking thing's tucked away. Oh my god. Such a shitty job. <laughs> Such a shitty job. Um, there's even a spot on the midpoint on the drive shaft too. And don't forget this, if you guys are an owner of a manual, not an automatic, <sighs> there is a grease joint that needs to be greased up here. Uh, right there in, in the midsection, and I believe on the front, the mini shaft uh, has two grease points. Make sure that you're lubricating and greasing those points. Um, definitely helps with shaft wobble and noises and all that stuff. So if you can see that, there are grease points from there to here, and you definitely want to keep up with that. Uh, original exhaust, all still working good, no issues. I'm surprised actually, but yeah, everything's... Everything's good. Um, no, no problems. No major issues. So, yeah, happy, happy guy over here. I think it's time for me to change my fuel filter, though. I think I'm gonna do that next. And uh, tank seems to be in pretty good shape. I can tell somebody had the straps down and replaced the straps at one point. So clearly, when they replaced the rear end with the used stuff, they did that. The hog head cover did start leaking when I first got the truck, and that was with 200,000 miles on it. So I just went ahead and pulled the hog head cover, put all new seals behind it, new fluid, replaced it, and it sounds fine now. Everything's in good shape. Um, rust, I mean, the truck is a little rusty, but not, you know, it's it's pretty basic, honestly, for being over a 20-year-old vehicle. So I'm not even stressing it. No stress there. I'm good with that. This truck will last a while, but you can see it's got a very heavy-duty leaf spring package on it. This one was definitely one with a tow package. Oh! So, I don't have any serious complaints on this truck other than blind spots. Get yourself some little blind spot mirrors because this truck does have horrible blind spots. You can't really see what the fuck is next to you when you're cruising. Those little yellow or those little round blind spot mirrors are good. So that's my general consensus of this vehicle. After seven months, um, I just change the oil regularly. I inspect things. I can see right now I have a coolant leak, which means... The next thing you guys are going to see on this is, and I can tell where it's coming from, it's coming right there from the top of the, uh, <laughs> uh, where the thermostat goes in. God, I can't think right now. My brain is just fried. This heat's really getting to me. Um, but my uh, water pump is back behind here, and I can see that there's uh, wet liquid leaking down. I'll see if I can show it to you right there. See if that'll zoom in and see that wet liquid down there that's leaking down. That's definitely coolant. And that tells me it's time for new seals. And um, yeah, time to, time to inspect the water pump and put new seal behind it. So looks like I've got my work cut out for me. It's not horrible yet, but uh, it's definitely starting to get there. I'm getting little drips now underneath the car. So I'm having to refill every once in a while. So yeah that's uh that's a frustration but power steering everything all original components seems to be working good nothing's growling hissing or gargling you know overall car's pretty good for what it is you know I, I would be comfortable with taking this truck right now driving it all the way across the the u.s and back without even a concern i think i'm pretty sure you know fair and pretty good shape and have no issues this thing gets on the highway it just cruises just popper and you know fifth gear set her at 70 miles an hour if this thing does have cruise control just set it at cruise control turn your ac on and just roll out you know you get great gas mileage just a little four cylinder and beautiful beautiful thing man it's a beautiful thing so there you go that's that's my overall uh speech about the gm uh, s10s and gmc sonomas those are the common failure points that i've managed to find so far um outside of that i'm not really having huge issues but like i said i did put a bunch of used used parts in this thing i put used engine used transmission used rear end and brand new clutch so there you go anyways guys don't forget to smash the like button subscribe all that good stuff um i did change the plugs on this thing just so you guys know i did change the plugs i didn't do the wires because the wires were fine but i did change the plugs when i got a hold of this thing um basic maintenance and uh yeah so anyways don't forget to subscribe smash the like button do all that good stuff hope this helped you out if you guys have further questions just let me know don't forget to join my facebook if you want to ask questions man i've already torn this entire truck basically down and put it back together and you know fun fun it's fun it's a simple truck to work on sometimes it's frustrating because everything's tucked that's the idea it's a little compact truck so it's going to have little tuck components but uh yeah so all right guys toodles